welcome to Covenant Presbyterian Church. We figured during the pandemic that we'd give you um, an opportunity to learn a little bit about the organ, a little bit about the history of the organ, and about this particular instrument. So first we'll talk a little bit about the history of the organ and why it's even used in um, our church worship services, and then give you some, uh, just a, a little bit of a walk through this particular instrument and describe kind of um, uh, what, you, what you see here and what, uh, what makes up the pipe organ. So first, a little bit of history. The organ is one of the oldest instruments. Um, it actually dates back about 300 years BC to an early hydraulic instrument that just blew air through pipes, a Greek instrument. Um, it entered the Christian church fairly early, again, just because it was a fairly old instrument, but also because it was probably the only instrument of that time that could fill the space of, um, of, a, of, a, of a large space like a cathedral. And in fact, um, many cathedrals had several organs in them, organs in the back, the great organs that would fill the space and could be used for the uh, service music, and then maybe choir organs, other instruments that would um, accompany singing and accompany choir sounds. And that's actually how the modern instrument came to be. You'll notice that there are several keyboards. Um, as the uh, instruments, the choir organ and the great organ, were all put together and uh, combined into one instrument. So in fact, what you see here is not the organ. What you see here is the console for the organ. Um, the organ is actually um, uh, at the front of the sanctuary and is where all of the pipes are. So the, the, the instrument itself is the combination of different pipes. This particular instrument has about 45 ranks or sets of pipes and a, a little shy of 3,000 pipes total. So um, let me, uh, I'll, you'll notice just in terms of the instrument that there are three keyboards, one called the swell keyboard or swell organ, the great keyboard or great organ, and the choir organ. There's also um, a pedal board. So when some of the first instruments that were made were mechanical. So when you uh, pressed a key, you actually moved a lever and allowed air to go up into the pipes. Um, and so for some of the larger pipes, um, some of them were 16 to even 32 feet long, um, it was quite a bit of effort to actually um, press that key. And so uh, pedal boards were made for some of the lower uh, pipes in order to play those kinds of sounds because it was just frankly easier to use your foot to play some of those kinds of keys. So what you see is actually a keyboard made for the feet. It's not, um, a, and the organ music is actually written for, um, usually for two lines for the, uh, for the hands and one line for the feet. So um, this particular organ, as I mentioned, has several different um, keyboards, and they are basically separate organs that are kind of put together. So let's take a little tour actually through the, through the instrument here at Covenant. So there are several chambers within the organ. This is the swell chamber, which is located above the chancel on the right side as you're looking towards the front of the church. This is a chamber right behind the choir loft, which has the loudest stops in the organ, the tubas, as well as the softest stops. In this chamber, the choir division is right over that area. And this division looks out over the top of the chancel, which you can see here as I pan over it. And this is the chamber right next to it, which is the great division, and is um, above the chancel uh, to the left of the sanctuary as you're looking towards the front of the church. These are the largest pipes of the organ the, in the pedal division, which are behind the screen at the front of the church behind the cross. And in the basement are two large blowers, which produce the air for the instrument. So you've seen a whole bunch of different kinds of pipes in the pipe chambers. And in fact, the, um, the kinds of pipes basically fall into, uh, and the reason why we have so many different pipes is to get the kinds of different sounds. So for one particular sound, um, Many people, when they look at the facade or the front of a, a pipe organ with nice, beautiful metallic pipes, they assume that all of the sound is coming from those individual pipes. But um, each individual pipe just makes one sound over and over again. It's basically one large whistle. Um, and the kinds of sounds coming from the organ come from the different kinds of pipes that are usually often behind those pipes. 
<clears throat> so, for example, um, in order for to get one sound on this keyboard, there are 61 notes on the keyboard. There are 61 pipes to get those to get what I just played, um, and. To get different sounds, one has a different whole set of different pipes to get different sounds. Which you can then add together to make different sounds. And that's that's the basic of how the organ basically works. So there are um, principal sounds, those are the large pipes, and this organ has a few principal sounds. There are also flute pipes, and these are usually the, the wooden pipes that you see in an organ are usually flute pipes. Um, this instrument has um, several different flute sounds, and, um, and so it's one of the um, nice features of this instrument. It's a very warm sound. Then there are string pipes, which are basically principal pipes that are very narrow in scale, and they sound um, edgier, if you will. innovation that was introduced in about the 19th century was to uh, have string pipes play together but slightly out of tune um, such that they um, what we call celeste. So you hear that kind of a shimmer with it and then people thought that that sounded much more like a violin you know with a little bit of vibrato. Um, this builder actually put in flutes that celeste Finally, um, another kind of set of pipes are reeds. These are pipes that have very much of the individual characters and um, they, they vary widely in, in terms of uh, what kinds of reed pipes are used and uh, different countries favor different kinds of reed sounds. So this instrument has several reeds and a reed pipe is, is just that. It has a reed that actually vibrates inside the pipe and that's what makes the sound. So um, this, act, this instrument has a bubble, um, a trumpet, a very large trumpet, a clarinet, um, an English horn, and a French horn. And then finally, just for the sake of completeness, there are sets of pipes, they're actually principal pipes, but they're, um, they're used at different pitches to give a very kind of unusual sound. It's called a mixture. So listen as I play up the, up the keyboard, they don't go necessarily from lowest to highest. So why on earth would you use that kind of a sound? Well, it adds sort of a brilliance on top of it. So if I have these principles, I'll listen to it with a mixture. It just adds a brilliance to it. <clears throat> so those are the kinds of pipes in the instrument. Um, and what about all of these knobs and buttons on the, on the instrument? What are these? Um, well, these um, are called stops. Um, if you've heard the term pulling out all the stops, it came from the organ technology. If you, um, each one's a, one of these things, these stops, activates a set of pipes. So, um, and the number of... Um, now you get the idea of where the term pulling out all the stops meant. It basically gets louder and louder and fuller um, by the more that you add. But these are what are used to control which uh, pipes are, are actually being used. Um, these sets of uh, buttons or knobs across the top are called couplers. They allow um, different uh, pipes within different chambers of the organ and from different organs. For example, the swell organ. Let me change that again. So the swell organ to couple down to the great organ. So now I can um, couple um, these uh, sounds together. 
and that allows one to uh, mix sounds from different parts of the instrument. And then finally, these buttons across the and, and here and across the um, uh, toe board are called pistons, and these allow the organist to change stops, sets of stops very quickly. So these can be set in advance in order to change things quickly. So this is what I'll use, for example, um, in the middle of pieces to change um, the sounds very quickly or between verses of a hymn. And then finally, you'll notice these um, uh, toe pedals here um, that allow one to get, um, uh, basically to get volume from the instrument. The whole instrument is behind shades, or they're basically like Venetian blinds, and these open up and close the Venetian blinds to let more sound out. So, for example, if one has... Um, up that box, it allows more sound to get out. I'm not adding any more pipes, but I'm just letting more of the sound get out. And together, this is, um, this is what's used to put things together. Over the last few months, you may have noticed that some of the sound is a little bit different from the organ, and perhaps the look of the organ console is a little bit different. This is actually a, a console I have in the basement of my house. Um, and we've been doing some of the recording here, frankly, because the recording quality in some cases can be a little bit easier and um, better um, because we can record it directly to a, a disc for recording purposes for the church services. Um, it also gives us the ability to get some different sounds and just to be able to um, broaden the uh, experience, I think, hope for, hopefully during the worship services. So in addition to pipes, we have the ability to play recorded sounds um, of pipe organs from around the world. So for example, I'll play a hymn through um, with pipe sounds that have been, re each individual pipe has been recorded from um, instruments at Salisbury Cathedral, um, a, a very famous instrument built in the 19th century in England. And I'll play another verse of the same hymn from a 19th century instrument built in France, in Caen, France, both by um, very famous organ builders. It'll give you an idea of the different sounds of, uh, diff from different instruments. And um, we'll use this example to, uh, s to hopefully have you a little bit more aware when you're listening to the worship services to see if you can tell whether it's coming from Covenant or whether it might be coming from an in another instrument around the world. to have such a wonderful instrument, um, uh, a true pipe, uh, a true windblown pipe organ is a, a wonderful sound and a, really an instrument that can't really be duplicated um, truly uh, in all of the complexity of the sound. And, um, and this particular instrument and the colors that it has is able to play music from many different centuries and the warm character of the sound, I think, really um, helps support the, the congregational singing. And it's one of the reasons I um, really uh, uh, um, am delighted to be able to play this particular instrument. So 
Thank you very much, and I'm always happy to answer any questions if anybody has any questions. Thanks.